All right. And then we meet another gal, Cecilia Payne. She then demonstrated the physical connection between temperature and the absorption lines. What does that mean? All right, here, let's take a look at this. So the first star that we're going to look at is an O star. And if you look at the spectrum of an O star, you'll see some lines. And they have a specific um, set of lines, of absorption lines. You can see a line here, a line here. You can kind of see these different lines. And this is the O star, which is our coolest star. And then we get to the B star, which is a little bit warmer. But you can see the absorption lines change. So a couple of things are happening. And also, um, a couple, more than a couple of things are happening. Uh, you should copy down this diagram. This is kind of important to understand. So. Um, the absorption strength goes this way, but also, um, so the higher the absorption strength. So helium is this purple line. So for O and B stars, um, you can kind of see a graph, all right, of, of helium, okay? All right, and then hydrogen is this blue line, and you can see right over here, the blue line right there, you can see what happens at different kinds of stars. So the substance that has the greatest amount of hydrogen in it would actually be an A star, all right? And then we, um, and this is helium, or actually, um, this is still helium as well, I think. No, calcium is the orange line. So this is calcium. And then we have this titanium oxide in our warmest stars. And I might have this backwards. Uh, I'll put a call out to double check. But I, these might be our coolest stars, and these might be our hottest stars. I may be wrong about that. Let me just pause. Okay, I was right. These are our hot stars. So the O stars are the hottest stars, and these are the coolest stars. Okay, M's. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. And so you'll find in a cool star more titanium oxide. In a really hot star, you'll have a lot more helium and hydrogen. Okay, so that leads us to some classification. So let's talk about the stars, and each of these is a letter. So the O stars are very hot, which I just said. And uh, they have weak hydrogen absorption lines, indicate that hydrogen is in a highly ionized state. So you have very little hydrogen. We well, have a lot of hydrogen, but it's very ionized, which means that it's charged. Um, at A stars, they're just the right temperature to put electrons into the hydrogen second energy level, which results in strong visible lines in the um, invisible spectrum. And then the FGK stars are, are low enough in temperature to show absorption lines of metals such as calcium and iron that are typically ionized in hotter stars. Okay? And then the K and M stars are cool enough to form molecules and their absorption bands become evident. So if you looked at those, the chart, you kind of make sense. Now, um, for K and O stars, the temperature range more than 25,000 Kelvin for O, that's blue stars, and less than 3,500 for M stars, okay? Another thing that's interesting is that the spectral classes our stars are actually subdivided. And so, for example, our star, um, our sun, is a G star, but it's also a G two stars, so there's like class one and class two, etc. So that's kind of cool. They have uh, subcategories for um, stars. I think the key thing to understand is to have this chart down and understand basically uh, here's your O's are your cool stars and then or your hot stars, pardon me, and your cool stars are your M stars. This chart helps us to understand um, so much more about um, about the different stars that are out there. And so hopefully that will help you understand how we, A, how bright stars are of magnitude, B, kind of how the spectrum is determined, but then also the connection between the spectrum of a star and also the type of star that it is. So.